Why is it called that anyway? A chef's cure? Yeah. Because their isolation dish is the cure to COVID. Oh! Come by. Fellas, welcome to Mind Society Studios Kitchen, a chef's cure. We've got Curtis, we've got Steve. Typically what we do in these segments is we have the chefs... Wait, hold on, let's... Wait. Let's, let's talk about oh. this. Uh, so, what? you guys aren't actually chefs. No, so. we're, we're not chefs. So what are we gonna call you guys? Well, we've got a list that we came up with. Coffee peeps? Two friends. Two friends. Two Normal friends. people. We're a dynamic duo. <laughs> Steve and Curtis. Blood brothers. Blood brothers. We, we did touch Ooh. blood one time together. <laughs> bad boys. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. What, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? What, what you gonna, gonna do when, when they come, come for you? you? We like coffee, but... Yeah, I guess fundamentally we are coffee people. I mean, I met you guys through coffee. Oh, we'll go with coffee peeps. Coffee yeah. peeps. All right, so we'll that, run this back. Let's go friends. coffee peeps. Right, go, 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 go. Go. Let's go. Oh, don't tell them. Act normal. Act normal. Act normal. Act normal. Whoa, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to My Society Studios Kitchen. We have Curtis and Steve, the coffee peeps. Gonna do a little bit of a chef's cure slash coffee peeps cure today. And the thing that I always think about when I need a cure is ramen. Mm. Let's get straight into it. All of these random different items we're gonna combine to cook and bring together and make a delicious ramen. With these different sauces here, these are kind of like the fundamentals of like a lot of Japanese cooking. These are all like $2.50 each, so super, super cheap. And these are things that you could kind of just keep in the pantry. Literally. Sugar, salt. What kind of fresh stuff do we got here? So mm. I see we got some uh, green onions, ginger. So for that, we've got just the chicken and some of the root veg, like uh, your leeks, your carrots, your onions, and that's basically it. To add with that, we got some like dried seaweed that we're gonna make as well, like that yes. brings the sea and the umami ness of it. Shout Superior out. quality as well. Yeah, yeah. We shout had out a to tough choice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we got some bamboo shoots as well. Yeah, so this is more of a topping. We're gonna pickle these. Eggs are pretty much gonna be soft boiled and then marinated in soy sauce. There's so many people that like make the ramen actual noodles from scratch. Completely fine to just go ahead to your yeah. local. It's not a cop out. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool, man, can, right? Yeah, 100%, we can say that. Do we need any special equipment? I feel like for those of you at home, this pot looks very large. It is very large. But you don't need a pot that large. Completely fine to do it in a normal sized pot. And then we've got a burner here. Yeah, so do you need just one or? At the start, I think individually, you can do a lot of things separately. The thing I love about ramen is at the end of the day, it's all about combining things at the very end. I'm super interested. I love ramen. Let's get into the actual making of this stuff. Well, first, First step before we start cooking. Hands clean. With palm olive. Shameless oh. plug. Mm. Yeah, I've heard good things. We've got Ooh, the Japanese blossom oh my God, to go that? with the Japanese theme. Yeah. Time. Is that yeah. especially for today? Or Come on, that give me your hands. Wait, actually? Ooh. Ooh, oh, ooh. whoa, that's three fat drops. I love it. Yeah, this is yeah. a oh, lot. <laughs> oh, that actually smells really good. I use it for cologne sometimes. I would like I you a like... lot if you smelled like this in public. Is that all it's going to take? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Sweet. Oh my God, I love everyone right now. Yeah, oh, this is yeah. really something. Put me to work because I got idle hands. So I reckon we can get the simple stuff out of the way first. We'll get you doing some easy dashi stuff. Curtis will make the pickles. We'll change change Ooh, swap. places. Swap cameras. <laughs> There's oh, that bowl there. I got cool. a bowl Feel. here. Easy, something pots and I bowls. Something I prepared earlier. A bowl. <laughs> All right. So normally we just weigh it out. Ooh, it's like getting to... technical. Yeah, coffee yeah, 100%. Guys. Coffee guys. Coffee we guys. Coffee into everything. Coffee skates. Yeah. Shout out uh, Akaya. Asa uh, uh, is it Akaya? Akaya, Asaya. I've never known how to pronounce yeah, me that. me neither. Either way, I'm the best wrong. scales in the business. <laughs> <I'm probably wrong. laughs> that is shameless. <laughs> what if our folks, like our audience members, don't have a scale? The way I like to tackle it is more like tea. Because basically we're using water to extract all the flavor out of it. Yep. That's like 100 grams for a bag. Yeah. Because I like a lot of flavor, we're just going to dump the whole pack in. <laughs> That's um, easy way of... Yeah, easy. That's the easiest way of uh, right? measuring it. Boom, 100. Um, and then what do we I, got? let's do like two liters of water. Two, three liters of water. Two just liters like of water? Pump it in. Mm. That goes straight in. I think this is one liter, right? Is one liter? Let's oh. see, we got the scales. Yeah, so, but essentially... Uh, ah, that's why we got the scales. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't have scales at home, one liter, just get a jar of pasta sauce, an old one. Look at how much pasta oh. sauce it had in it and then calculate accordingly. 500 mils is half of a liter. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> 400 more. You finished. 
Yeah. I'm finished. That's Great job. That's it. Great job. Now, now we're both. Now we're just. Now we're just gonna watch Curtis. Yeah. And with the dashi over here as well. So this is gonna soak in cold water. It's gonna like open up the pores of the dashi and basically allow us to, at the end when we boil it, extract all that flavor from it more easily as well. So dashi in the water. Put it aside. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Get let's get let's here. get out of the way. Yeah. And then I'm gonna Bye. actually introduce you guys oh. to something that I brought. And oh, can I drink out of my Tony? These guys are so fancy. They brought their own. This is not good enough for them. Wait, what? These we brought out. Oh, we brought These cups? Yeah. Oh, this is actually something which is pretty cool. This is actually from Oaxaca, mm. which is going to be paired with something special that I brought that is also from Oaxaca. I'm not a drunk, I'm just a connoisseur. <laughs> I, love, I love mezcal. It's been a part of our culture growing up Mexican in Southern California. Shout out to Jorge for putting me onto this as well from Mex Trade. Agave typically takes anywhere from seven to 20 years to harvest. This one's taken 15 years for them to harvest. Damn. They only made 1,050 bottles of this. So this is 501. That's why mezcal is something completely different from other spirits in the world. I'll help drink. Man, wax seal and everything as yeah. well. <laughs> oh, scales. The whole time what? I'm just drinking, like. In moderation. In moderation. Every, everything in moderation. Moderation. Yeah. Soda there. Oh. Freeze. It's a long ass plane, yeah. <laughs> Bastard. So when we go outside and the plane is like literally long. <laughs> it's a long ass plane. Damn. From horizon to horizon. I like learned how to make pickles a few years ago. You literally, you can pickle anything. So right now we're pickling bamboo shoots, but it's just water, vinegar. I've got rice wine vinegar here because we're making Japanese food, but you can do it with white vinegar, with balsamic vinegar, whatever vinegar you want. One to one ratio of water and vinegar. So here I've got 250 grams, 250 grams. And then all you need is salt and sugar. So for here today, we'll do 15 grams. So I don't know if it's happened with the other episodes, but it's cool that the coffee guys make yeah. like no. way everything <laughs> no, out in no, scales. No. Like that's what I was gonna say yeah. right now is like the chefs are just like, oh yeah, just yeah. grab some of this, throw it in oh, there. Yeah, right? You grab some of this, Very put it precise. in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so jealous of that. I'm like, how do they know? You know, like yeah. I get so like, you know, anxious. I'm like, oh, they haven't measured anything. <laughs> so I'm gonna do about seven grams of salt. That's it. All that stuff now, I'm gonna give a little mix. A little spatula. Little and literally we're gonna bring that to a boil and then pour it over whatever you're pickling. Yeah, thank you. Obviously, the longer they sit together, the more pickled they're gonna become. And so you can like chuck that in the fridge once you're done. You can use this brine indefinitely, right? Mm. So like you could kind of just pickle anything essentially. Oh, it kind of smells like... Oh, it smells funky, yes. yeah. Yeah, it smells like some funk. Yes, mm. yeah. 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 Funk. It's a little fermenny almost. As Curtis knows, because yes. he's in Oaxaca, you don't shoot this, you just kind of kiss yeah. it. That's tasty. And it's got oh. a lot of minerals up front, but it's still light sweetness to it. I always love that about mezcal because you have a sip of it and then you're like, oh man, this is gonna be intense. Um, you wait for that hit and then it never comes. It's just like smooth sailing. Super smooth. Spicy, um, like a good spicy. Do you wanna be on chicken duty? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I got gloves. Oh, you have gloves? Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson gloves? Mm -hmm. mm. My bag of tricks. Oh. So we've got the bamboo shoots here. Pretty cool. Oh, and we're just cutting them up centimeter thick. What? I've always wanted to feel like a doctor. My mom's been like, hey, you know, be hey, a doctor. Hey, you should be a doctor. Yeah. But now I'm like, hey, like, mom, if you if you ever watch oh. this, I'm, I'm a doctor. You guys are in the coffee industry. Mm. You were at Proud Mary, Auntie Pegs, mm. when I first met you. And when I first met Steve, yeah, you nice. were at Auntie Pegs yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. talk to us a little bit about how you guys got into coffee and then also like how you guys got into ramen. I got into coffee because I went overseas. It's harder to find good coffee, especially overseas than it is either in, I grew up in Sydney. Sydney, hospitality was was big for me to the point where like I loved it enough to drop out of uni. I was like, I'm gonna do this full time. What? I was starting <laughs> ages ago now, uh, advertising and PR. I was born in New Zealand. My background is Cook Islander, actually. My family moved from New Zealand here to uh, Australia when I was seven. So I grew up in Brisbane um, and I came down here to Melbourne a few years ago. Pretty much I was 15, still in high school, sitting at home playing computer games. And my mom came in and she was like, you should get a job. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, yeah, yeah. She was like, a new cafe open up down the road. And then she got up and then walked down the hill and went in and I was like, hey, can I get a job? <laughs> and they were like, oh, what? When... <laughs> I really want to play like, like yeah, yeah, you could get a job. Yeah, and they were like, maybe come back in like a month. We're just new and so we're all good for now. A month later and then I went back down and I was like, hey, can, can I get a job? <laughs> and they were like, oh, uh, 
I mean, I guess we probably need someone to do dishes on a Sunday. And so I just started doing dishes and then that kind of like expanded onto working on the floor. And then I got behind the bar and started making coffee. Very, very basic level coffee making. So I came down here. I was still working for the coffee company. That first job that I got when I was 15, those people ended up expanding and they opened up a restaurant and then they opened up a bar. They opened up a coffee roastery eventually. And so I settled at the coffee roastery. Bare Bones Coffee Roasters, it was called. Shout out to Bare Bones. Shout out Bare Bones. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> an episode of shout outs. <laughs> shout outs to shout outs, yeah, man. Shout yeah. outs to we're gonna, shout outs. We're, we're gonna have a plug episode. Yeah. yeah, went through, did a whole bunch of stuff with them, roasting, training, account management, and then moved down here to Melbourne and finished up with them. It was kind of like the first time since I was 15 that I hadn't had a job. Then ended up walking into Prouds one day and no I knew the manager in there from Brisbane and they were looking for someone to work on the bar at Auntie Peg's. And I was like, sweet. She was like, you'd be perfect. Is this Danny Choi? Yeah, Danny Choi. Oh, Choy. Daddy, Daddy Choi hired Choy. me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. shout out, biggest shout out, Danny Choi. <laughs> Danny Choi hired me as well. Yeah, and then Dope. a week later, I was uh, settled in and had the job. And then that's where you guys met. Mm. Yeah. And then kind of fast forward to like, we're having Ron and today, mm. I'm the chicken dude. Easy. So, I feel like you're about to like go low with that chicken, <laughs> bro. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, oh, that happened. Oh, you still oh, caught it. Hey, go. Does that happen? Steve's gonna walk me through the oh, chicken yeah. stuff. Yeah, but also, oh, basically, we're yeah. about to start the broth now. No plastic. The most important aspect of ramen. So we got chicken and veggies. I'm gonna chop up the veggies down this side, oh, and y'all can chop the... up the chicken. <laughs> Sorry, we're having a little yeah, party sorry. over here. <laughs> we're just draining the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. We're not choking the chicken, yeah. we're just draining the chicken. A chef's cure. A chef's like cut. The X-rated version. Yeah. <laughs> draining the chicken. <laughs> So we're pretty much gonna chop up the ingredients, chicken, veggies, all this is gonna go bang, bang, bang into a pot. Oh, jeez. And then we're right? just gonna add all some of my chef mates water into like, there. What the and f this thing. So yeah, God y'all damn it. They're thing. not gonna see this part. No, they it's will see this part because the producer and the director like to make an absolute ass out of this. <laughs> oh, handle it like a boss. Look at that, boom. Right? Done. My chef mates are gonna be like, this guy's an absolute head. Don't I mean, worry, they're gonna think that about us as well because yeah. we, don't know what we're doing. Meanwhile, Steve is having a vacation here. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna help myself to mezcal. <laughs> now we're gonna get into bad. sake next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, there's Total. more? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanna do your sake? Yeah, yeah. Wait, there's more than one sake? Steve. Whoa, what did I sign up yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my yeah. birthday? <laughs> You want to chop up the vegetables into like the same I'm, sort of size no, pieces. You're going good. You're going good. Okay, so I've turned this into a mess. No, it looks good. Ooh. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. This is the great thing about ramen. There's no wrong answer. The right, length cool. of time that this yeah. is going to cook for essentially means that like we can't f it up. I'm not a chef, so I never claimed to be a chef. I don't even want to be a chef. I wanted to be a ship builder. <laughs> Did you actually? Yeah. A ship builder. Yeah. I wanted to sail around the world. You know what, Anhel, you've been here interviewing all of these people coming through third. this space. Yeah. When is anyone going to take the time to interview you? I don't, I'm not that interesting unless I have um, a couple wait, of Wait, wait, so wait, you say ships. Um, what kind of ships? Like a ship for yourself or ships like, for other people or? Well, I mean, the world's round. So, all right, so we throw the chicken in. Yep. And basically we're going to like top it up with water, bring it to the boil. Once all the like Damn. the ship parts of the chicken, once it comes out, we're going to drain it. Mom's gonna be mad. <laughs> Remove the shippy She's parts. She's gonna be real mad. And then add the vegetables to properly cook it. So you get kind of like a cleaner taste. We've got the broth going. Yep. We've got everything prepped for the actual broth. We've got the uh, water up to temperature here with soft boiled egg. What are we looking at here? So keep it bubbling. Bubbles are the key indicator. And then what you want to do is you want to drop the eggs in slowly. So if you want to be the egg dropper. Why are you making an oh, ass man, out of me? Fun, no. If you drop it in hard, you're gonna crack it and you like let that yeah, oh, oh, oh scandalous. <laughs> and so right when that happens, you want to pull a timer out. I got a phone here. My gloves, six minutes. Set timer for six minutes. So timer for six minutes. Mm. We've got an ice bath prepped, we'll hit that. So you want to chuck them into the ice bath afterwards yep. to stop that cooking process essentially. And yeah, based on how many ramen bowls you're making, you would make up that many eggs, one egg per bowl. So today we're doing five because it's us three and mm. we've got some hungry ass directors and producers. <laughs> so we should probably just cook the whole thing. How are you guys staying in contact with your colleagues in the industry? It's been a very weird time. So one of the things that I put together was this little project called License to Brew. So I put gotcha. out like a little Zoom chat essentially where we could all just get together and have a chat online. Every morning I was waking up and making myself a coffee anyway and I figured that there were a lot of other people out there who were doing the same thing. I might as well do this together. It was like back right at the start of COVID and it was a really cool opportunity to catch up with all the people that I was working with. There were a lot of international people that signed up for it. Some dudes over from Canada, they were like, 
after brewing in the evening while they were making dinner. Shout out to the Quebecois. Ça va, oui ça va, c'est bon. Um, cool. While well, that's happening, that's extent, we might make a uh, tare. So tare is like the salt component at the end. Steve, of the you ramen. make something for. All right, for you know what? Change. I got the gloves on. Drink. There's been an easing in Victoria of restrictions. What's going to be the step forward? It's been such a weird period that the future right now is pretty unknown. I was looking for something secure. I've always done a bit of investing with my dad. Yeah, that was something right back at the start of COVID. It was like very suddenly I was told. You're not gonna have any money coming in. Well, I had nothing else going on. Just all of that time that I spent at home focusing on it, it just kind of helped things to run a lot better. But the whole idea is like to try to use this period to really work on uh, a few projects. Steve's now in Sydney. He's come down to visit you. I see you guys playing like some basketball. Trying not only it. is the mental health being kind of sorted out and the emotional side as well, mm. like staying connected to your colleagues and that, but like also the physical side, which is very totally. important as well because we're on lockdown. Yeah, physical activity, super <laughs> important for mental health. And I remember my like therapist saying to me one time, four things you gotta lock down, eating well, <clears throat> sleeping well, exercising and socializing. And obviously, so like sex falls into exercise or <laughs> that's a good right? work. <laughs> sexual health yeah. as well is very important. Very important. I wouldn't know anything about that because I'm married. So, yeah. no, nah, but yeah. Wait, wouldn't um, you know all about that? Yeah, you got a baby. You know all about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> initially, Steve's always hella active. I always see him doing some kind of physical activity, whether it be running upstairs, running downstairs. I see you yeah. walking dogs. That's my oh, dog. Is that your dog? That's my dog. Oh, okay, that's my dog. Yeah. That's my dog. Yeah, I could talk about her for ages. I love her. Does she got an Instagram um, account? Nah, should I make her an Instagram account? Mm, yes. I love my dog, but that's too much effort for my uh, dog. Yeah. You, know? you yeah. don't want to throw your dog out there into the limelight. What if someone comes and like steals my oh. dog? Don't steal my time. dog. Time. Okay, time. So, oh, and hell. Take the spoon. You gave me the worst spoon no, ever. It's, no, you got two to... spoons. So basically you just want to take it out and just plunk it in. I'm going to turn it. the stove off. You got it. Yep. Boom, Boom. I didn't break it. <laughs> Shout out to not breaking eggs. Shout out to not <laughs> breaking eggs. <laughs> True. So there's a little side story with Steve. He actually shot pictures for one of the events that I did with the homie. Yo, oh, I thought you were going to bring this up. Yeah, dude. So like, I'll give you like 12 course menu all the booze you could drink. And he's like, yeah, all right, sweet, I'll take it. He had a date that night. I made the misfortune of telling you guys that I had a date later, so I had to like, <laughs> I had to leave, you know? Like, I can't save it the whole time. And you're like, oh, you got a date, really? Pull out like three or four bottles of Mezcal? You're like, so you gotta try this, 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 and this? We Ooh. had like five bottles of Mezcal and a bottle of rum. Apparently it all went well. I, yeah, it went well. I definitely he was not it. sober. He killed it. <laughs> when I, I love the drug, Steve, Thank man, you. it's all Thank good. You. So, and hell. Um, yes. If you look here, that's scum. Do we clear it out? Well, that's that's what we're boiling this for. Yeah. These are all the impurities. These are all the evil demons Bad inside stuff. the yes. chicken. So we kind of ladled that out. <laughs> well, I was going to say we f uh, not f it. We are uh, it. I saw already. I mean, sh we saw, saw anyway. We uh, are. <laughs> we, um, we just kids watching. We're going to yeah, clean sorry. this chicken. And now we're going to take this off the boil and we're going to Fight get this hot water out of here. Clean each like piece of chicken under some cold water and get all the bad stuff off. Yeah. And then we're ready to start boiling it long term to make our broth. So then we're gonna combine it with our veggies, we're gonna combine it with the chicken, we're gonna add some water into there, and it's all just gonna cook down, and then basically, well, six hours minimum, yeah, but you can go yeah. literally up to like 18 hours. The longer you go, I mean, the more flavor you get, right? Exactly. Yeah. How much time you Flavor got? time. Take me there. So, ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> so like with movie magic and TV magic. Oh, I've always wanted to do this. What? Here's one, we prepared earlier. So you jump all the veggies in, you jump all the chicken in, and this is what, like 10 hours? Because you guys did this. You guys did it yesterday, right? That's very, that's, uh, that's unprofessional. Uh, so it, unprofessional. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, uh, call me back. <laughs> just a timer. Yeah. Mm. Just a timer. These are our garnishes. Chop up our spring onion. We've got our spring seaweed onion. chopped up. So what we're going to do is we're going to deshell the eggs. Do you want to deshell one mm. egg? Just I'm going to hit up palm olive. Very wise. It's like <sighs> palm olive. <laughs> Holler at the homie, like, <laughs> give me a big bottle, please. So what you can kind of see here is we've got all of our sauces out again. Over here, Steve's making taro out of our sauces. And then I have marinated some chicken in the sauces as yeah. well. So this is the protein topping that's gonna go on top oh. of our ramen. We want the chicken thighs because they've got more fat on them. So yeah. more fat equals more flavor. And Marrow. so in here we've mixed up sugar, salt, soy sauce, cooking sake. Ooh. Mirin and chopped up spring onion and ginger. Umami yeah. central. Exactly. Mm. So this is like making like a cold drip or like a cold brew overnight. Or a infusing. cold brew <laughs> overnight. Oh. Water, coffee, when, when we were coffee. Doing this, yeah, when we were trying this, we were like, everything had a coffee reference. Everything has a coffee reference. If you want to poke us later, like, and be like, hey, what's the coffee reference for this? We got one off the top of our heads. 
minutes. So. What you want to do is massage the chicken. Okay. Yeah. That's naughty. So why don't you give that a go? Okay. Why don't you, you give it a little I've squeeze. got magic fingers, by the Woo. way. It's gonna like press and infuse all that flavor into the chicken itself. Ooh. It's gonna get a deeper infusion into that. Ooh, tell me about that deeper infusion. Mm. Ooh, yum. <laughs> Yo, you're the one massaging the chicken, man. All right, so I'm gonna clean out all of this uh, scummy stuff. Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the sorry. This is the soli stuff. So basically at the end, we're gonna add that dashi that we made earlier with the seaweed, seaweed. And stuff, the broth. And then that's basically the the water element of the ramen, right? Mm. So it's actually a lot more complex than you guys made it out to me. <laughs> actually, you guys said it was hella easy. It's just a lot of steps. That's All right, cool. a lot of steps. Okay. It's cool, right, but it's simple. Steps. You want to taste it? Yeah, I would love to. So I made it, yeah, 100%. Oh, can I um, taste it? If everyone wants to taste it, that's cool. Oh, sensitive. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yeah, Just yeah. because, be like, be oh, do you want to palm all of the, uh, the spoon? Your mouth? Yeah, we're going to palm. <laughs> oh, no. That's Is that a, legal? Yeah, that's health safe. Hey, 99% yo, percent of bacteria. 0.9. 99.9. I wonder what, like, 0.1% of germs. Mm. It, that's like, like the human soul. <laughs> that. So it's two parts sea salt. Yeah. Wow. So one part boiling water. God damn. And basically, what you just get salt, mm. you pour some boiling water over it so it dissolves the salt. Then you get some sake, God some mirin, some vinegar. Hell of umami, though. Yeah. Now, now umami is mainstream. Like, a lot of that MSG, a lot of that meatiness, a lot of that, like, really, really saltiness. Yeah. Mushrooms as well. So, like, umami is just that, that extra flavor. That's a he that's hell of. <laughs> oh, I forgot how salty it was. God like, yep. damn. So the whole idea as well with uh, <laughs> Whoa. the tare is like the seasoning. So over here without broth, we don't season the broth at all. Steve and I don't argued about this yesterday. Yeah. I was like, man, we got to put some salt in this. And he was like, no, 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 no salt. To keep it in coffee terms, you want to take out as many variables as you can. If we don't salt yeah. anything, Peel this but egg. this salty oh, mixture, now you know in the future, like, oh, if you wanted a bit more salt, you just add a bit more of this salty part. So if you don't add salt, you're safe. And um, so at the end, that's essentially where it's all coming together. The broth is the flavor of the chicken and the vegetables. Yep. The tara is the seasoning, so that's the saltiness. And then the kombu, mm -hmm. the dashi that we've made, is the umami element. Mm -hmm. And so then we've got flavor, saltiness, umami, lay it on top of each other like a trifle, and it's all gonna come together to make something delicious. We've oh. boiled these eggs, we've ice bathed them. Yeah. Look at that balance. Ooh. Ooh, that's a yeah. good thing, right? That means that it's Hell like... yeah. Yo, hit up Steve on a uh, hinge. Um, <laughs> hey, whoa! The handle? Oh. Hit up Steve Chan. Nah, you gotta keep scrolling to find me on hinge. <laughs> what? I don't know how it works, man. I just use it, man. It's... Now we're gonna Yeah, but if you, if you swipe right, oh. just be sure to bring the... Oh, oh. Bring no, we're the cool. jiggle. We're cool. We're okay, cool. All right. um, we're cool. now we're gonna marinate these eggs. You can do one part soy sauce, one part yep. water. Depending on how many eggs you wanna do, you want the amount of liquid, total liquid, to cover the eggs, because mm. that's all you need. So if we have two eggs, bloop, put one away. Whoa. No, put them both in a cup. Whoa. And because it like it reduces the amount of the amount of yeah. Smart. We got no. some soy. Yep. Got some water. And then you do. And what like, does this do? It just makes it a bit tasty. Makes it a bit more pleasant looking. So we've done chicken broth today. So we're making chicken ramen. Yep. You could do pork broth, and it would be pork ramen. Mm. And after you do this Whoa. for like an hour or two, this white egg mm. turns into oh, a. Sh okay, I did. Yeah, you did break. You did yeah, break. Yeah. I'm gonna, no, I'm not a chef. So wait, what's that gonna happen to this? So egg? this Here, one... I'm just gonna eat this. Oh. Look at that. Oh my yo, God, it's yo. perfect. Yeah, yo. right. Perfect egg right there. Oh, can I feed it to you? Can I, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, 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 wait. Unhealed, unhealed, unhealed. Wait, can I go for more of this? Oh yeah. my, okay. Mmm, that's really magic right there. That oh. egg there <laughs> turned into, look Whoa. at this brown guy. Brown's a good color. Brown, mm. homie. You. Brown it down. What's up? Take this pot away. We're going to rinse this chicken. So we got all this stuff going, right? We've got our garnishes. Yeah. So we've got the finish here. Ooh. We've got the chicken just beautifully mm. pan fried. Mm. We've got the boiling water for the noodles. Yep. We've got the uh, dashi here, and then we actually have the broth. Aside from the actual dishes itself, what's the next step for the coffee peeps? I'm heading to Sydney. Oh, he's abandoning us. Sydney town. I'm gonna put this noodles in the water. Yeah, I'm heading to Sydney. My family's from up there. And you're gonna be embarking on a couple projects up there. Curtis, what's happening with you in uh, Melbourne? With COVID being such like a curveball, I'm kind of like biding my time, but right now just like basically trying to conserve my energy. Yeah, like that investment stuff that I was talking about earlier. So that as soon as we come out the other side of this, I can, can hit the ground hot. I've been working on a couple of ideas with a friend of mine as well. I think it's going to be very interesting seeing what comes out the other end. So you have it here first. 
These guys are not giving us absolutely anything of what they're doing next. How long do we let the noodles sit into the hard boiled water? It always depends with like the noodles that you have, things like that. This one is cool. It's kind of like fresh but frozen. So like just three or four minutes and should be cool. We've, we have our dashi, our stock and our uh, tare mixture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one part tare to two parts dashi to two parts stock. So two, two, two. Two, two, one. one. Two, two, one. Yeah, Tari will be okay. your one. Because it's so salty. Yeah, yeah, hella salty. For all of the non-chefs out there, <laughs> for all the people that go to ramen as a bit of a comfort food, something kind of easy, you guys kind of simplified it a little bit. Corona hits everyone differently, right? And I think, mm. take care of yourself. For me, at least, that's through food, as messy as it is. It's food, it's upskilling, as long as you take care of yourself, take care of the people around you. Take care of the community, take care of yourselves, take yeah. care of your colleagues. Curtis, words of wisdom. I feel like this is like the perfect kind of dish to be able to like make up for, yeah, your friends, family, loved ones. Something warm, hearty, fill your belly, fill your heart and soul. Speaking about soul though, let's talk a little bit about that sake that you actually came into contact with. Yeah, last year I was a little confused and I headed away to Japan for three months. A good way to figure some stuff out and I literally went up into the countryside in the middle of nowhere and I went to this tiny little town called Saijo and I met this dude who had the one restaurant there in town and his name was Makoto. Not a single person in town spoke English. Makoto and I, we had to basically talk together over Google Translate. At the end of that trip there, every single night I'd go down and have a couple of beers at his bar and have a little bit of food. At the end of that trip I brought him a little gift and he gave me some sake to say thank you. This is from Hiroshima Prefecture as well where I was. He said to me take this with you and share it with your friends and share it with some people that you care about because um, yeah it's an awesome awesome story and experience and the whole thing. The thing about mascot as well is you share it with friends, mm. you share it with people that you love. Sake is just one of those things as well as like it's something that you would pair with ramen as well. Totally. You could serve it cold, you could serve it warm. You I, can I, serve I, it however I, you want. I've got <laughs> I, I, I actually forgot how to speak right now. Could be the mascot but I think that it's really special to me just because I was overwhelmed when Makoto decided to give that to me. And yeah, I'm so excited to get to share it with you guys. I've got this clay handmade pour. Pour the sake into this. Apparently it like helps infuse the flavor as well. Yeah. And then- I'll just put that there, just if you want to use it. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. And... I don't really drink that often, but if I do, <laughs> it's usually sake, mezcal, or beer, or wine, or mm. fernet, anything that's liquid and alcoholic. Hey, water as well, you gotta hydrate. Yes, water, of Hydration course. Hydration station, yes. right? So... Everything. Over here, Steve's putting together our ramen bowl as well. Yes. We had all of our condiments yes. prepared in front of us. Mm -hmm. We got our pickles, a spring onion, our seaweed, taro. We've got our broth. We've got our dashi, eggs, noodles made up, chicken. And always taste, no matter what you do, whether it be coffee or whether it be food. Yeah. So, Ooh. fellas, kenpai, thank you. Be well. Ooh. We're gonna get through this. Ooh, yum! Thank Cheers, you, boys. Final touches. Mm. One egg. Spring onion in the middle. Wow. Right? Good to go, my Start man. Start sessions. Slow that bad boy up. So that's our ramen. Woo! Yeah, yeah. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> but everything's literally under $50. All those ingredients we had out earlier, so cheap, so easy to get and to, to make up. So this is my favorite part of the segment here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this chicken right here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. Mm. My suction isn't as good as Curtis. It's all about the mm. slurp, baby. Oh, that's a good slurp. Mmm. Slurp session. 2019, 2020, 2021. Curtis, Steve, we're coming. You. The Mind Society, here to stay. All the back. Let's eat. Idadakimas. Idadakimas. Kampai. Kampai. <laughs> let's plate, let's eat. All right, yeah, let's eat, I'm hungry. $100 bills. 